what you guys got another video here for you in this one we're talking about false positives or false alarms which are harmless files or urls which are incorrectly identified as a malicious uh, file or url by your antivirus program now software programs that behave like malware uh, can sometimes be identified as a malicious file or program and your antivirus program will sometimes even block it and won't let you download it and this can be frustrating because some programs are not malicious and they're classed as a false positive now this is what we're going to be talking about today so let's head over to this website here i know this is a very popular website and a lot of people use the software on here now some of these uh, particular types of software on here will be flagged as a virus and that's because of the nature of the program. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is a virus, it just means that it's going to be flagged as a virus because of the nature of it. And uh, it's doing some sensitive stuff like trying to recover passwords and things like that. This is a uh, really sort of weird behavior and your antivirus program may say what's going on here this this program is trying to uh, access certain uh, files or certain data on your computer and it might alarm it as a virus and it will suddenly flag it so this is why these sites are generally uh, flagged as viruses and things like that when it's simply not the case so let's go ahead and take a look here so we'll go ahead and take a look at one of these programs so let's take a look at this wireless key view here. So when I click on this one here, you can see here we've got now the page open. And sometimes the page may not open. It may be flagged because it's a malicious site and it's not. It's just your antivirus program doing that. It may be an add-on that you've got on to protect your browsing and it will block it because it's not known to that antivirus company as a safe file so it will flag it. So let's go ahead and download this, which is down the bottom here. So you can see here what the person has done on this site because this file was constantly being flagged as a virus. And you can see here, he's actually had to put a password on the file to stop your antivirus program from deleting it. And this is generally what happens. So why does this happen? Like I said before, it's to do with the nature of the file or what it's doing, the program, what it's doing. So I'm gonna download this now and uh, we'll get this downloaded. There we go. And what we need to do is now unpack this and use this, uh, this password here. So I'm gonna click on this file here and we'll need to extract these and if we extract this, we will then be able to see what happens. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and opened up another folder so I can extract these here so you can see. And I'm going to extract these to my computer. It now wants to add the password in. So let's go ahead and do that. Just going to copy and paste this in. Click OK. And there is the files. And it's straight away my antivirus program or Windows has deleted that file because it thinks it's malicious. Let me show you that again. So I'm going to drag it over and it will delete this executable file here. And watch it disappear. Boom, gone. And that is your antivirus program protecting you uh, against uh, viruses and malicious software but does it mean that this program is malicious or it's a like a malware or spyware or whatever it may be that is blocking it for let's take a look so me antivirus program here i've got norton on here at the moment let's just see what it's actually detected and what it's uh, blocked so looking at the uh, logs here you can see the se severity of this was high and it's basically saying that it's been quarantined and then removed and it gives you the information here. So reputation level is bad. So that's why it's blocked it. And if we look here, it gives us some more information about the actual 
flag that is done here and it says thousands of users in the Norton community have used this file. This file was released 10 months ago and it gives you some information here. Also gives it the threat name, which is called trojan.gen.mbt. Let's click on this. Now, if we upload the file to uh, virus total here, you can see here we'll come down and you can see it says undetected. It's clean, which is a, uh, very strange. So to be able to use this file, you would need to disable your antivirus program temporarily so you can use it. And this is what you'll have to do for risky files like these that have been flagged. Now, is this a risk? That risk you'd have to decide to take for yourself. There's no known way of knowing whether this file is safe or not. You would have to obviously upload it to Virus Total and make that choice yourself. So we'll disable this, and I've used this program many times, and I've never had any issues. So I'm going to disable this now. And if I was to copy this, just this one file over, it's going to let that file go over onto my computer because I've disabled the antivirus program. So let's upload this to Virus Total. I'm just going to quickly drag this file onto here. And there you go. We now see quite a bit of information about this file. So these companies here are flagging the file. Webroot. Hack tool. And that's because it's a password recovery tool and it's going to come up as a hacking type tool. But then you look over here, Tread Micro has also said it's a hack tool. And then you've got Sophos and a bunch of other ones like McAfee. And a bunch of other ones here. Now coming down a little bit, these are all saying that it's okay. It's all working okay. ESET Nod32, MCSoft, Dr. Web here, undetected, but then Dr. Webroot here is um, saying it is detected. So coming down, you can see Kaspersky and Malwarebytes and Microsoft and all these other antivirus companies are saying the file is okay, it's undetected. So then you would have to decide whether you want to trust that file or not and whether you want to run that file or not on the system. And that's the thing you have to work out. So 10 days ago, someone uploaded this file, so they were doing a check. But you have to work out whether these, some of these are reputable companies, you know, whether you're going to be able to trust what they're doing here. And it depends on whether that person who has created that file has tried to get it uh, removed from their system. And that's another thing you have to take into account. A lot of these have basically said the file is safe. Now, there's a community tab here that tells you uh, a little bit about it as well. And you can see the behavior and it will give you some behavior. It's probably going a little bit too much into too much information for some people and they probably just won't use it. And this is why you have to decide for yourself whether it's a trustworthy tool to use. Common sense plays a big part in a lot of this stuff. So let's try and download in the same file on a virtual machine to see what happens. So I'm going to go down here and look for wireless key view I'm going to click on this one here and what we'll do is we'll come down and we'll download the same file and I'll use this um, password here so I'm going to download this file here and down it comes drag this onto my desktop and now we need to extract this file. So let's go ahead and extract. Extract all to my desktop. And we'll put the password in. Click OK. And there is the file. And of course, on this machine, you will get unknown publisher. And uh, this is a 
biggest reason why I see this happen a lot is unknown publishers and also it's flagged for the type of behavior it is. So it's allowing me to run this on this machine here, which has only got Windows security on it. It hasn't got another antivirus program. It's got a Windows security or Windows Defender, it's known. And there we go. So it's working on this machine, but it will be blocked by some uh, antivirus programs. So let's go ahead and download the tool that I did yesterday on a video. And a few people complained and said that it was a malicious program or a virus. And now I can't uninstall it and all this sort of stuff that I see in the comments section. And it's simply not true because you don't install this program at all. It's a portable program, which means it doesn't install, which means it's easy to remove. So whatever that person downloaded off the Internet, it's not this. So let's go here and we'll get this onto the system. And I'm going to drag this all out into its own folder. Let's just say a new folder here. Let's just put it into a Windows Toolkit here. So here we have the actual program. And again, portable application, which means I can click on this and you will see Publisher Unknown. It's an unknown publisher. And some, some of these will be blocked depending on the type of program it is. And you will read this Terms and Conditions. Click to Accept. Takes you to his page. And then we're going to start this up. And it runs perfectly fine. And there we go. So it's now running. So this hasn't installed anything on the computer. It runs as a portable application. Some of these do get flagged depending on what uh, files you download from the Internet and what this is actually doing. So if I started doing this launcher here, this NIR launcher, this is going to have that wireless key view in it when I download it. And this can then be flagged as a virus on my main system, which had Norton on it. So this may not be detected on my main system, but it may do once I download this, this program here, which has that flagging tool on it, which is Windows Key Review uh, View. So let's quickly upload this to Virus Total here, and you can then see. So we're going to upload just this file here. Now, the problem with Virus Total is sometimes if the program's too big, it won't let you upload it. They have made it a lot larger to upload files here. I think the maximum is 300 megabytes or something like that. But you can see this program does get flagged, but it's only by WebRoot, and it's by uh, Max Secure and this company here and Malwarebytes and you can see here machine learning and this is why some of these will get detected is because it detects this as a vicious, malicious program and yet it's more than likely a false positive and they haven't given it the recognition as a false positive and removed this from their uh, their actual database here so it's being flagged because a lot of other people that are saying that it's safe to use as you can see semantic softwares all the big companies are saying it's okay and then we've got malwarebytes that is actually saying that it's a machine learning issue so if they contacted uh, malwarebytes they may remove it from uh, their their risk level to stop it being detected as malware but these companies may still continue to do it unless they remove it and they will probably want pain to do that i would have thought okay so let's talk about downloading uh, the actual software or any type of software it always comes down to a bit of common sense when you're searching for things just be very very careful about where you're downloading files from they have to come from a trustworthy source and they have to come from a trustworthy person now again this is the reason why some people don't download programs that are from unknown publishers or they won't download uh, files from, you know, untrustworthy sites. 
and you'll see loads of downloaded links for other types of stuff. It's same thing for portable applications or scripts that you're running on your computer that you can get from GitHub. You have to trust people that are creating these to make sure they're not doing anything malicious to your computer. For instance, 7-Zip. I've been using 7-Zip for years, and literally I can tell you that it's still an unknown publisher. But if you download it and run it, you'll see unknown publisher, and yet loads of people use 7-Zip every single day. Oh, you can see there, there is a detection for 7-Zip. And it says here, so, but all the rest of them are clear. So you have to use a little bit of common sense when it comes down to that. So are you going to not use 7-Zip because one company has said that it's a Trojan? Now, there is a submission uh, place on all of these sites here where you can go to Bitdefender and you can submit your information here and upload the file or even give them the URL and they will check it and to see whether it's a, a false positive. And again, the same thing for F-Secure and a bunch of other sites. They'll all do the same thing. And what you have to remember as well is security programs will generally uh, delete the file if it thinks it's a virus, and that's the way it protects you, the consumer. So you have to remember that's why some of these files just disappear from your computer when you're trying to download them. And sometimes you can't even download the file because it blocks it at the browser. It won't even let it onto the system. Now, unfortunately for sites like these, they will constantly be flagged as uh, dangerous or maybe the programs on them will be flagged as malware or dangerous because of the nature of the software itself. A lot of these are false positives and they're not going to be malicious to your PC. So that is the way uh, antiviruses work. Now, when you're talking about Windows Repair Toolbox, uh, that is just a standalone person that has created one program. And again, uh, you may have issues there with that program or with certain antivirus programs. You will need to trust the source that you're downloading it from and also make the decision whether you want to run this on your computer. So what it comes down to is you at the end of the day, whether you want to use this type of software on your PC. Every time you download something off the internet, you are basically taking a risk and you're relying on your antivirus program to protect you so sometimes as you can see here sometimes it will flag it and sometimes uh, some antiviruses won't so you always need to have a bit of uh, common sense when it comes to downloading stuff off the internet now if you're downloading paid software and you're not paying for it and you're literally using portable applications which are paid for now at the end of the day there is no real way of telling whether this is a virus or whether it's a false positive. You have to rely on your antivirus program to do that for you. You then have to make that educated decision whether it is a false positive or whether it is a virus. So the choice is yours at the end of the day. Now, if you are downloading stuff that is deemed uh, dodgy off the internet, like pirated software and things like that, then you run the risk of getting infected anyway. And it's those types of things that you need to be really careful of. Now, if you enjoy this type of content, check out some of my other videos. There's plenty of videos on here on fixing PCs, building PCs and other content like that. There's over 2,500 videos. Also, maybe consider subscribing to my channel and hit the bell notification and click all to be notified when I upload new videos. If you want to support me a bit more further, you can always hit the join button and uh, join my YouTube members group because $4.99 a month, you can cancel at any time. You get a few extra perks and you get your name rolling up on the end credits of each video. Anyway, with that said, I hope this uh, video helps you out. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. You'll see their names rolling up on the screen right now. And I shall see you again for another video real soon. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.